Hey YouTube, Ken here from Think Trade Profit. In this video, I want to teach you how to build a better chart library in Fidelity's Active Trader Pro. So let's jump right into it. So you notice on my layout um, today for this example, I do have the Fidelity Active Trader Pro kind of main green frame where I'm going to use my chart. You don't have to do that. I normally float all my windows. The only reason I have this showing in this example is to show you some of the pop-ups and the little menus that kind of originate here when you click things. So you don't have to do it this way. This green frame doesn't have to be here. You can float everything. So bear with me. I'm going to create a new chart and you can follow along. But go to charts, new chart, and what this does is this does bring some of the settings for the most recent chart that you saved, but I'm going to do a little bit of setup just so things look normal. So for our example, I'm just going to have three different tabs, but you can have more, and I'm going to label them with the time frames. So I'm going to assume that I mainly use the daily, the 60 minute or the hourly, and the one minute time frames, and this is where I do my research. And yours might be different, but for this example, I just want to keep it simple so you understand what's possible. So I've got these. I'm going to take a peek at them and make sure. See, when I clicked on one minute, make sure this is set to one minute. Let's pull up a stock real quick. All right, so the one minute tab says one minute on the bottom. The 60 minutes says 60 minutes. And the daily says daily. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So this is going to be our first example. I'm going to go to save chart. It populates this name your chart field with the last chart you saved. But I'm going to call this library. This is going to be like the big holding place for most of my work. All right, so now this is saved. And you can see there's some work on here already. Um, and this came from the chart that I previously worked on, but that's OK. So we've got three tabs. The important thing to understand about tabs is any work you save doesn't cross propagate across tabs. So what do I mean by that? Let's assume that you start with a top down approach and then you're examining a stock either in pre market or after news breaks or something's going on where you're interested in a stock. And let's use Tesla. All right, so here's Tesla. These are the settings on my chart. So I pulled it up and it looks like this and there's a moving average on the 60 minute chart and that kind of thing. All right, let's do a top down approach and let's draw some support and resistance, for example. So real quick, I'm gonna go, this would be a resistance line. We're just gonna pick some things arbitrarily, just bear with me, just to, to so you understand what goes on with saving. And we'll say this is approximately support. So again, I've drawn on the daily, on the daily tab, and I've drawn some lines. Let's put something in here near where today is. So let's draw a, a trend line maybe. Let's see if I can get this right into today's action. And you'll understand why in a second. So that isn't perfect, but all right. So with this, I'm going to save this chart. So go ahead. Save is up here with a little diskette. It's different than the settings menu, but hit save. It fills this in with the last thing you save. Library, this is what we're working on. I'm going to save it. It says it exists. You want to place it? You hit yes. All right. So now we've got some, some work saved on the daily chart of Tesla. This is brand new. So what I mean is this isn't going to show up here in the 60 minute and it isn't going to show in the one minute. The tabs are completely separate and your work is saved completely separate. It's saved by tab. So why is this important? This is important because as you want to drill down and do some analysis on the 60 minute, you'd like to see these main levels, right? So with this organization, doing it this way, I suggest separate them by the time frames that you do your analysis on, and then in that tab, go to 60 minutes. So now if I go to 60 minutes in the daily tab where I drew these lines, they show up in the 60 minute chart. And there's a possibility, I don't think I got that trend line right, but if I go to say even 15 or one minute, you can see some of the lines as well. So they only stay in this daily tab that we name daily. We've messed with the frequency for that tab, but all in all, now you can see some of the things. You can drill down and see the analysis on lower time frames. So I know this seems a little bit strange at first, but you'll understand why I suggest this in the beginning. All right, so with that, let's go to the 60 minute and let's draw something there real quick. Uh, Let's do a support right around here and save. 
So if you're drawing stuff that might be useful in the future, save and save often. You can save as, uh, many charts. There's no limit supposedly based on the documentation and the charts are saved in the cloud. They're not saved on your local computer, just like your layouts. They're saved somewhere at Fidelity. I learned that. So you can't share your layouts or your charts, unfortunately. All right, so now we've done a drawing on the, we've done some drawings on the daily. We've drawn, done some drawings on the 60. But again, if you change this to the daily, the 60 minute tab that we're on, you only see what was drawn in this tab. So it's an important concept. So I'm gonna put this back to 60 minutes. So 60 minutes tab is set to 60 minutes. The daily tab, let's put that back to daily. Okay, the reason I say organize this from highest time frame to lowest time frame is you have the opportunity to drill down here. And as you assign them in tabs, you'll know how and in what time frame you made this decision. This resistance line was actually done in the daily tab, so I was looking at the daily chart initially when I plotted it. And the reason that's important is you would ask, well, why can't I just do everything in one tab and just change the time frames there? If you have a tendency to draw things on a lower, lower time frame, so let's say you were looking at Tesla on this lower time frame, and you drew a bunch of things for today, for whatever reason, you're looking at the one minute, and you said, okay, here's something. Here's something. So I'm drawing this on this one minute chart. If you were only to use this chat, this tab, and flip back and forth in between them, what's gonna happen? You're gonna have these little tiny lines that are gonna show up in your higher time frames, and you're not gonna know when and where you drew them because they came from a one minute chart. These may not be significant when you're looking at the daily or the hourly or what have you. When you look at the daily, here they are. But what does that mean? Those are drawings from your one minute time frame. So it really doesn't make sense to just go to one tab and do everything there if you draw a lot on the lowest time frame. So with that, I suggest doing most of your analysis on the higher time frames, keeping them separate by tab. And then if you need to drill down, when the time comes where these may come into play on the one minute chart, you'll be able to see them because you can change it here. So we see something here. This may have been that trend line from before that came into play. And that's where you do your analysis. And then you flip back and trade off your smallest time frame. So it sounds a little bit strange, but the reason this is really great is with this one library chart, we can save multiple stocks. You can save a ton of work here. So I flip to Facebook on the daily. I'll draw a trend line. I'll try to do something like this. So we'll draw that there. And we'll draw something on support resistance. And we'll put that about there. So I'm going to save. All right, so what does this mean? Now you've got work for Tesla. Once you go back to um, the daily time frame, you've got work for Tesla, um, and you got work for Facebook. That's what we drew just a moment ago. So you can continue. Go to Apple. This is some stuff I drew earlier. <laughs> Um, on the other template where I, where this chart stole from. Let's pick something different. Let's do Google. We'll throw something there and we'll throw some kind of fan thing here like that other example. Something like this. So save. Always save your work. If you've got something, some analysis that you want to keep and you may use in future times, save your work. So now in this one library chart, we've got work for Apple, we've got work for Google, we've got work for Facebook, and they will always be there, and they'll always be there in the tab that you saved. And if you need to look at the one minute, or the five minute, or the 15 minute, just use the tab where you saved your work, and you'll be able to see what you drew in that perspective. So that's really what I wanted to get at, so you understand how this works. Again, I don't recommend you doing everything in one tab and just running it from here. You could if you don't do a lot of markings in your lower time frame, but it could get really messy. At least here you know, hey, I was drawing this on the 60 minute or I was drawing this on the one hour. And then you can kind of um, port your analysis to the one minute chart as you're making decisions. 
That's my suggestion. So a couple other important things. Make a backup. You could always, um, you know, as your chart library grows, you're gonna, you can have hundreds or a thousand symbols in here, right? You can use this same um, chart for everything. Just save often and it's gonna grow. So you'll have Intel, Apple, Tesla, Facebook, all your work saved in here. So this saves you from that pre-market analysis or the daily analysis. You'll have long-term time frame stuff already saved, big support and resistance levels, trend lines, things that'll help you analyze faster. If news breaks or you come back to a stock that you've traded before, you're gonna have all your work saved. But what I suggest is just save the backup after you get any kind of um, a bit of uh, work in there. So what you do is just go back to save chart. It's going to default with this. Let's just go library backup and maybe do that, I don't know, every day. You could even have a monthly one. The one thing you should do to be careful of is when you save, make sure these frequency ones are set on the correct tab uh, time frame that you label them. So move this back to one minute, move the 60 minutes to 60 minutes and make sure the daily is on daily. That way when you save and you come back and maybe you're in a rush or you're trying to make a quick decision, you're looking at the right thing in your chart. I've made this mistake before. So I'll go back here. Oops, that pulled up the chart. It didn't save it. And you can tell that I didn't save that correctly last time. So one minute, the 60 minutes are set to 60 minutes and the dailies should be set to daily. And now we want to save. Save chart, save, yes, that was the backup. I'm gonna go back to library. Let's go save chart, let's do it this way. Because if you click any one of those little elements in there, all right, so now the backup and the library are saved. All right, one more point to make. Always save your charts from here, and saving a chart is different than saving a layout. So if you go to exit, you should probably save before you exit. If you go to exit or restart and you get a prompt uh, like this, do you want to save changes made to this layout? That doesn't save your charts automatically. So make sure you don't exit before saving any valuable work you have and save your backup too. And really that's what I wanted to share with you. That gives you enough so you understand how you can really build this out and do a lot of analysis, have it organized and saved in a way that makes sense. And you'll know that you drew certain analysis or, or indicators or lines on a certain tab and you were looking and considering the daily or you were looking and considering the 60 minute or you were looking and considering the one minute. Um, they, you know, it doesn't cross propagate. Stuff is saved by tab. So over time, you're going to have hundreds or maybe even thousands of uh, ticker symbols with your work saved. You'll have to spend some time maintaining it to, to keep it useful, but it's really gonna save you so much time. Instead of coming in cold, not saving your work, and doing analysis over and over and over again, I find myself coming back to some of the same stocks, right? Some of the, the hottest stocks in the market, um, they're cyclical, they come back. So it's good to have some of that long-term stuff that really you can jump to it at a glance because you already did the analysis before and you saved it. I hope this is helpful. Um, and if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, like this video, support our channel. We have a lot of Fidelity users here, and I love to share ideas. If you have a better idea, if you do something better than this, share in the comments below. I'd love to hear about how you organize your charts. Um, but I think this is a good step to get you organized and realize that you can save hundreds of drawings and studies and all your work on one chart kind of template and you can build a library over time of really useful information to help you make better decisions. So with that, I'm gonna let you guys get back to it. Great markets we've had lately. As always, play good defense, and thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.